Today's lecture is 2.5 rational functions and their graph. Previously, we learned most of the functions that we know how to solve. We end up graphing it, right? Um, now we're going to cover rational functions graph. And before we start graphing it, there is some of the things that we need to um, do the exercise to learn how to find. The first thing is going to be vertical asymptote. So example one, we're going to go over how we're going to identify the vertical asymptote from rational functions. So let's look at example A, f of x equals to 2 over x minus 3. Your vertical asymptote is going to be your restrictions. We went over this from Math 95 even. Restrictions of rational equations is when the volume may denominator zero, right? So um, in order to find vertical asymptote, you just look at your denominator. Your denominator on this problem is x minus three. So when does this become zero? That's when x is equals to 3. So you could say this is going to be your vertical asymptotes. So in order to draw uh, rational functions, you need to be able to find your vertical asymptote. Let's look at the second one. g of x equals to x minus 4 over 3x squared plus 5x minus 2. Again, in order to find the vertical asymptote, your denominator equals to zero. So in order to find that x value that makes denominator equals to zero, you pretty much need to um, solve this. So you're going to factor, and when you factor, 3x squared plus 5x minus 2, you get x plus 2 and x minus 1 third. So letting each factor equals to 0 using zero factor property, you get x equal negative 2 and x equal positive 1 third. And you call this is vertical asymptote. So C, when you have 4x squared over x squared plus 4, Finding a vertical asymptote, nothing to do with numerator, only denominator. When does denominator equals to zero? So again, we let denominator equals to zero. And when you solve for x, you get negative four. And use the square root property, you get plus minus square root of negative four. This is imaginary unit because you have negative, right? You have negative inside of square roots. This is imaginary unit. Imaginary unit means that you're not going to have any real solution for this x. So for a vertical asymptote, you don't have any vertical asymptote for that. No real solutions mean no vertical asymptotes. Let's look at h of x. We do the same thing. In order to find vertical asymptote, let denominator equals to zero. And you get negative nine. Then when you use the square root property, you get square root of negative 9, 
Again, you have negative inside of square root. So this is another imaginary unit. It means there is no real number. So vertical asymptote is none. Second exercise we wanted to do uh, before we're graphing uh, is example B, I mean example 2. Find the horizontal asymptote if any for the given functions. So before we do finding exercise, here is the, some rules that you need to remember. So let's say the the functions start with the numerator of ax to the nth exponents. We're assuming this is going to be the leading coefficients and the degree of functions, the highest degree. So first terms when it's um, descending order. Same thing with denominator. When um, denominator is descending order, b is the leading coefficients of denominator and m is going to be highest degree on denominator. So if we have that format set, then if we're going to compare your degree, degree from the numerator with degree from denominator, if degree is larger on the numerator than denominator, then it will be always no horizontal asymptotes. And when uh, numerator degree is smaller than denominator degree, then always your horizontal asymptote is going to be zero. When numerator degree and denominator degrees are equals to, then your leading coefficients, leading coefficient of the numerator over leading coefficient of denominator will be your horizontal asymptotes. So we're going to do the example following these rules. There is one exception. So for example, example one, I mean, uh, the first concept, it say numerator degrees uh, the, the greater than denominator degree, then there is no horizontal um, asymptotes. But when numerator degree is equals to denominator degree plus one, so your numerator is just one degree higher than denominator, then you're going to end up getting slant asymptotes. And we're going to go over and, and I'm going to show you whenever we get this case, just the one degree different between numerator and denominator, then I'm going to also show you how you're going to find your slant asymptote. Um, example A, f of x equal 8x squared plus 1 over x to the fourth plus 1. So in order to find horizontal asymptote, we first need to look at this exponent. You have square and you have fourth. So numerator 2, denominator 4. So when we are comparing those two numbers, 2 and 4, we know that 4 is larger. So denominator exponent is larger. In this case, your horizontal asymptote is y equals to 0. Because the definitions, the rules that we have right here, right? Denominator is larger than numerator exponents, then 0 is your horizontal asymptotes. Then let's look at the next one. You have uh, g of x equals to 2x cubed minus 6x over x squared plus 4. So on this one, let's see, we're comparing cube with square. And cube is larger. So there will be no horizontal asymptotes. If I wanted to go one step further, finding the slant asymptotes. Why is it slant asymptotes? Because like I mentioned, the numerator degree is one degree higher than denominator degree. 
then you're going to have slant asymptotes. So how are we going to find slant asymptotes? So let me write that down. Even though this plot problem is not asked, I'm going to show you how to do that because you had to do that for uh, other examples anyway. So we're going to see if we can find slant asymptotes. Slant asymptote, what we need to do with the slant asymptote, we're going to divide the numerator by denominator. So basically what we're trying to do is see what's between these two. So what happened when you're dividing numerator with denominator? Whatever the leftover linear will be your slant asymptote. So let's do the divisions. And we know uh, when you're doing a long divisions, You need to do descending order. If you have any missing term, you're going to use the zero. All right, so square is missing, so I'm going to use the zero. Um, I have a linear, so it will be 6x. Oh, that's negative, right? Let's erase that. And we have negative 6x. And then we don't have linear so well I got new pen but still not working as I like to uh, okay I got it plus and zero right we're doing dividing this with, what are we dividing with? x squared plus 4. So you need to do x squared plus 0x plus 4. Again, if you have a missing term, you need to use the 0 for the placeholder. So that's how you're going to divide it. And we know we need... Uh, we need a 2x, multiply x squared to get 2x cubed, and 2x times 0x will be 0x squared, and then 2x times 4 is 8x. And we are dividing. I mean, we're subtracting. So when we subtract, we get 0 from the cube. We get 0 from the square. And then we have negative 6 minus 8. So that will be, uh, let me use black negative 14x and then when we bring down the next number which is going to be zero that was let's put just positive sign for now and if we wanted to look at your uh, x squared x squared is already larger than what you have left over so it means we cannot do any divisions right we cannot do any divisions it means your 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 linear between these two equation is 2x so your slant asymptote oh. Let me draw slant asymptote. It's going to be 2x. Or you can say y equals to 2x or equals to y. So whatever the, um, the line you end up getting for this linear, that will be your slant asymptote. And I will show you how to do that in the uh, next example. So then let's see our next questions. We have h of x is equals to 
8 square, I mean 8x square plus 9x minus 5 all over 2x square plus 1. So if I wanted to find horizontal asymptote first, I need to compare the exponents, right? Square with square. This is the same. So when square and square is same, then remember your horizontal asymptote is using your leading coefficient from numerator and leading coefficient from denominator. And when you simplify that, you get four. So this is going to be your horizontal asymptote. Okay, so example three, it say find all the asymptotes. So we know we have a vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptotes, and maybe slant asymptote. Not all uh, of the function have slant asymptotes, so we need to know if that's the case, right? So let's look for vertical asymptote first. Your vertical asymptote is just dealing with denominator. So when x minus 2 becomes 0, right, that will give you your vertical asymptote. So that will be 2. And then let's see if we have horizontal asymptotes. Horizontal asymptote, you compare it as two exponents, right? Your exponent of numerator is 2. Your exponent of denominator is 1. So it means that you're not going to have any horizontal asymptote because numerator is larger than denominators. So let me write it. It's saying no horizontal asymptote. That's N. But then we understand this exponent is just one degree different, right? One degree difference. So we will be able to find the linear. The previous example, I used the long divisions to do the, the uh, uh, you know, long divisions to find the linear between numerator and denominator. I can also do that by synthetic divisions. So if I wanted to use the synthetic division, it will be 2 from the square and negative 5 from the, um, the first exponents and negative 3. This is going to be divided by x minus 2. So you're dividing with positive 2. You always use the first number as it is. And four uh, 2 times 2 is 4. Add them. You get negative 1 and negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 and into negative 3 is negative 5 so this is going to be your remainder right this is your remainder uh, and this this right here will give you your linear right your linear here is going to be 2x minus 1 so if you wanted to find slant asymptote, y equals 2, 2x minus 1 will be your slant asymptotes. Now we're going to look at how to graph uh, functions. So I have example 4. A, f of x equals 2, 2x minus 1 over x minus 1, okay? And I wrote down the steps that it's going to be required to graph. So first step, you're going to find vertical asymptote and horizontal asymptote. And then step two, you're going to see if a given function is any types of symmetry. Step three is going to be finding points, so x-intercept and y-intercept. And then step four will be your graph. 
And if you need extra points to figure out how your graph will be behaving, then you need to maybe plug in a few more points while you're graphing. So let's see. The first thing I wanted to do is finding a vertical asymptote. So vertical asymptote will be when uh, x minus 1 is equals to 0. So x will be 1, right? That will be vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptote is comparing the exponents, and both exponent is 1, which is the same, right? So this is the first exponent, first exponent. So degree of numerator, denominator is same. So you will set uh, your uh, horizontal, ex horizontal asymptote is going to be leading coefficient of the numerator over leading coefficient of denominator which is going to be 2. So that will be your horizontal asymptote. Symmetry. How do we tell if given function have any types of symmetry? Remember this from previous sections, right? So if we wanted to tell if function have symmetry or not, all we need to do is replacing x with negative x. So when we're replacing x with negative x, and if we get the function we started back, then that will be even functions, even functions. And if we get negative of f of x back, then it will be uh, origin symmetry, right? So let's replace with negative x and c. Uh, and minus 1 on the numerator. Denominator is negative x minus 1. And when you simplify this, you get negative 2x minus 1 over negative x minus 1. Um, this is not going to be f of x nor negative f of x. So these uh, functions do not have any symmetry, so no symmetry. So because there's no symmetry, we might end up plugging a few points, a few more points, right? Okay. So then let's see if we can find x-intercept. x-intercept, we let y equals to 0. So then multiply both sides by your denominator to get rid of fractions. You get numerator equals to 0, right? Because when you're multiplying 0 with denominator x minus 1, it will be still 0. So finding uh, x-intercept, it will be same as if you letting numerator equals to 0. And you will get x equal, that's negative, so become positive 1 half. So that's your x-intercept. Let's see if we can find y-intercept. y-intercept is letting x equals to 0. So you get negative 1 over negative 1, which is going to be positive 1. That's y-intercept. So now we're going to mark all these points. Let's start marking vertical asymptotes. So asymptote means that, that your graph cannot pass those lines. That's the restrictions, right? So x equals to 1. Let's say this is 1. Your graph cannot pass this line. You know what? Let me use the red because that's the restrictions, right? The graph cannot go through x equals to 1. Horizontal asymptote is 2. So you have 1, 2. And graph cannot pass this line.
it gives you four different area. You have this area, you have this area, third area, and fourth different area. So it's this this cross signs will give you it's dividing the area into four different parts. And let's see what else we know. We don't we know that we cannot use anything about symmetry because we don't have any symmetry on this. Um, we have y equals to one. So we have a point right here. Let's see if we can grab with green. So this is the point y equals to one. X is equals to half. So somewhere right here, half. And this is one, this is two, right? So when you graph or, or graph a smooth curve line that is passing, uh, that is passing those two points I have, then my graph will be look like that. Going toward your asymptote but never touch, right? So this is the graph you will have. Smooth curved line passing those two points. Going toward your asymptotes but never touch. So we can find the graph on the left side of your vertical asymptotes, but we don't know what's what's uh, on the right side of your vertical asymptotes, right? So it will be there on the top on the topper area here or bottom here. That's the only option we have. So if I know it's going to be on top, then graph look like that on the top area. Or if I have a point on the bottom of the horizontal asymptote, then my graph will be look like that, okay? But we don't know with those points I have. So what I need to do is I need to find, um, let me do that with black, find a few more points, a few more points that's higher than one. So maybe try two, right? What happened when I plug in two? to my equations. Uh, I will have two times two minus one over two minus one, which is three over one, three. So when I have two, is equals to three. And if I plug in three, I can tell it will be somewhere in the top area. Because one point is on the top, it means rest of the points that are, no matter what x you plug in, right? No matter what x you plug in, three, four, five, you should be all on the top, all on the top area. So, so I know that when I graphing the rest of the graph, it will be the smooth curved line going toward your asymptote but never touch. So that will be the graph that you're going to get for this given functions. So if we follow the same step to find or graph f of x equal 3x squared over x squared minus 4. First, I need to find vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptote x squared minus 4 equals 0. So x squared will be equals to positive four. And when you use square root property, you get plus minus two. Right. That's vertical asymptotes. And if I wanted to find horizontal asymptotes, uh, because the exponent of numerator, exponent of denominator is same, your horizontal asymptote will be leading coefficient of numerator over leading coefficient of denominator, which is three, right? I have vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes. Let's see if I have any symmetry by replacing x with negative x. And so I will have 
3 times negative x square over negative x square minus 4. The square will get rid of all the negative, which I end up getting the same function as I started. I told you this is going to be your even functions. And all even function is y-axis symmetry. So y-axis symmetry. Um, so whatever on the looking at y-axis uh, on the left side if you find the graph of the left side it should be matched on the right side right so last points that you need to plug in uh, and then let's find x-intercept x-intercept letting y equals to zero which means uh, you're going to have your numerator equals to zero so you get zero for x-intercept. Your y-intercept, you're going to let x equals to zero. So the numerator will be zero because zero is squared times three, right? And then zero minus four. Um, that's going to be numerator zero, so it'll be zero, right? So we look for intercept, but we found one point. That's bad, right? One point. Let's see what we have so far on our graph. So we have graph. Um, what was your vertical asymptote? Vertical asymptote is negative 2 and positive 2. Positive 2. And then horizontal asymptote was 3. And the points that you found is x-intercept and y-intercept, which is zero. Wow. So we only have one point and we have how many different area? You have six area right now. So let's see if we can plug in few points. Um, I will plug in I will plug in at least one point from this area. Why? Because I need to know if it's going up or if it's going down, right? So just one point. So maybe I will plug in x equals to one. Whatever it happened on this side, the other side should be matching because y-axis uh, symmetry, right? So just find this number, we'll know what happened with negative one, right? And then maybe one other point on, on the positive side, this side. So if it's a bottom, it will be bottom on here. If it's a top here, then it will be top on the other side too, right? Because it is y-axis symmetry. So maybe we can try one and three. So we're going to try one and three. When you place one into the... Um, uh, 1 into your given function is 3x. You cannot see it right now, so I'm writing it again. 3x squared over x squared minus 4. And when you replace x with 1, you're going to get... Uh, 3 on the numerator 
and negative 3 on denominator. So that's going to be negative 1. And when you replace um, x with 3, you get uh, 27 on the numerator. And then you get 9 minus 4, so it will be 5 on denominator, which is going to be 5 to 5th. So 5 to 5th. And if I wanted to mark that in my graph, when x is 1, y will be negative 1, somewhere right here. And when x is 3, y will be 5. So this is 3, 4, somewhere 5 here. 5, because I need to go a little further between 5 and 6. So when 3, will be somewhere right there. So when I graph what I have so far, this is the graph I'm going to get. Smooth curved line going toward your SM2. So let me extend my lines. So something like that. Smooth curved line going toward SM2s but never touch. Now, this graph is y axis symmetry. So now I know on the left side of the y-axis, I should have a matching line. And that will be graph for the given function in this problem. Okay, what about C? We have f of x equals to x to the fourth over x squared plus one. So this one, our vertical asymptote um, is x squared plus one becoming zero. Oh, now I see that I have a negative on the other side, which is going to give me imaginary units. So I will say I don't have any uh, vertical asymptotes. No vertical asymptote. Smaller information I get, it's harder to graph. If I have more information, it will be easier to graph. Uh, horizontal asymptote, what about? Horizontal asymptote, um, you need to compare the exponents where numerator exponent is larger than denominator exponent. So again, no horizontal asymptotes. Um, let's see if we have any symmetry on this one. So negative x have even power negative x have another even power. So when, uh, for some reason, they don't want it to write positive sign. So let me erase that. Okay, plus one, right? Yeah, that negative will, a uh, negative will uh, cancel out because you have even power. So you end up getting your equation back as you started. So this means this is going to be um, even uh, functions, which is y axis symmetry.
So I know that it's going to be right side and left side our y axis will be same, right? Um, then I need to find x intercept letting numerator equal to zero. You get x equals to zero for x intercept. Y intercept, you're going to set y equals to zero. I mean x equals to zero. So it will be zero over one which is zero, right? So again, just one point. So if I wanted to graph the information I have so far, I only have one point. No vertical asymptote, no horizontal asymptote, just one point. And I also know whatever uh, looks I'm going to get on the right side of y-axis, should be matched on the other side of y-axis. So I guess I can plug in maybe two points on maybe um, x equals to one and x equals to two. So I'm testing the right side of the point. And when you plug in x equals to one, you get one to the fourth over one square plus one, which is one over two, right? So you get one over two. Uh, when you place two, is two to the fourth over two square plus one, you get um, 16 over five. That's three, one fifth. So if I mark that on my graph, when it's one, it'll be one half. When it's th two, it will be three, one fifth, somewhere right there. And this is one, two, three, one, two, three. So maybe this green point, I need to put it a little higher. And when you draw the smooth curve line passing those three points, it's look like that and continuous. So because Y axis symmetry, the other side should be same. And you end up getting parabola for these functions. Next two examples we're going to do, maybe uh, pause for a second and try for yourself and see if you get the right um, answer. Okay, so pause and you try for yourself and come back and uh, try it. Okay. So the first thing we wanted to get is vertical asymptote, vertical asymptote, and x squared minus 4 equals to 0 will give me vertical asymptote. So it will be plus minus 2, and horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote, your denominator is larger, so horizontal asymptote will be y equals to 0. And symmetry, right? So we're going to replace x with negative x, 4 times negative x over negative x squared minus 4, you get negative 4x over x squared minus 4. And if we factor the negative from the numerator, we get 4x over x squared minus 4, which is what we started. So this, this is something you can say is negative of f of x. 
If you get negative f of x when you replace x with negative x, we know this is going to be odd functions. What types of symmetry odd function have? Origin symmetry. So it means uh, quadrant 1 should be matching quadrant 3. Quadrant 2 should be matching quadrant 4, right? So origin symmetry. And let's find x-intercept. Your x-intercept is letting numerator equals to 0. So you get x equal 0. And y-intercept. You're going to let x equals to 0. So you have 0 over negative 4, which is 0. And if we grab what we have so far, you know you have positive 2, And negative 2 as the vertical asymptote, y will be 0 horizontal asymptotes. And what's the points I have so far? I have 0. So now I need to plug in a few points, maybe plug in 1 here. And let me plug in uh, 3, right? That way that I know on the right side of the graph, then I can find my left side. So I will plug in x equals to 1 and x equals to 3. When x equals to 1 to the equations, I get 4 over 1 minus 4. So that will be 4 over negative 3. When I place 3, I get 4 times, th 4 times 3 is 12. 3 squared is 9 minus 4. So it will be 12 over 5. Um, this is going to be maybe negative 1, 1 third. And this is going to be positive 2, 2 fifth. So if I wanted to find those points, let's see. I can mark it. This is 1, 2, 3. This is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. You will have when x is 1, it will be 1, 1 third. So somewhere right here. And when x is 3, it will be 2, 2 fifth. So between 2 and 3, somewhere right here. So I know this point will give me graph look like this. This is going to be give me graph look like going down half parabola. Because we have origin symmetry. Because the origin symmetry, this, this graph, on the first quadrant should be matching on the third quadrant so I will get graph on here and then this graph right here this line should be matching on the second quadrant fourth quadrant matches second quadrant so we'll be going this way And I know we had um, y equals to 0, but in the middle graph, 
usually it passed the zero. It's okay to pass your um, your horizontal asymptote just for the middle. The reason you have y equals to zero is for this two side ones, two side graph that don't pass this y-axis, y equals to zero. That's why you have the horizontal asymptote for it. The last example we're going to do for this section is example six. Graphing h of x equals to 2x squared plus 9x plus 4 over x plus 3. Let's find vertical asymptote first. And maybe it's a good idea you pause this video and try for yourself and match your answer with mine, right? To make sure you know how to. And maybe checking yourself how much information you got it from watching these videos. So it looks like looking at the denominator, x cannot be negative 3. And what about horizontal asymptotes? Horizontal asymptotes the numerator exponent is larger, so there will be no horizontal asymptote. Uh, but also the numerator exponent is just one degree higher than the denominator, so you probably will have slant asymptote. In order to find slant asymptote, let's use the synthetic divisions. That's four divide by negative 3. So then you get negative 6. Add it to 9 will be 3. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. You get 5. Your, your remainder is not going to negative 5. Your remainder is not going to be matter when you're finding your slant asymptote. It will be 2x plus 3. Um, that's your slant asymptote. And let's see if it's um, symmetry, right? Symmetry. When you replace x by uh, negative x, not 0, right? you get positive because square will get rid of the negative sign. So it will be a positive 2x squared minus 9x and plus 4 over negative x plus 3. This is not f of x nor negative f of x. So you will have no symmetry. Let's see if we can find the intercept, right? So let's see if I can find x intercept. X intercept you're going to let y equals to zero or numerator equals to zero and when you factor this you get x plus four x plus one half equals zero so your x is going to be negative 4 and negative 1 half. So you have two points. Y-intercept. Y-intercept is letting x equals to 0. So it will be 0 plus 0 plus 4 over 0 plus 3. So that's 4 over 3. And we grab all this information we have. Um, 
we have vertical asymptotes negative 3. And then we have a uh, slant asymptote as 2x plus 3. So 2x plus 3, you're going to find y-intercept first, which is the 3. And slope is, so this one right here. y-intercept 3, your slope is 2 over 1. So you find y-intercept, slope 2 over 1 means go down 2, move 1, right? So that's another point right there. So draw the line passing those two points, right? That will be your slant asymptote. So draw the linear. Oh, not the blue. It should be red, right? Asymptote. And the points that we have so far is x equals to negative 4. And negative 1 half. This is 1, so we'll be somewhere here. This is negative 1, right? So half right there. Negative three. Uh, y intercept is one one third four over three. So y intercept is one one third. So if this is one, somewhere right here. So I can tell my graph should be something like this on this side. So graph up like that. 